ಗುರುರೇವ ಗತಿ ಗುರುಮೇವ ಭಜೆ ಗುರುಣೈವ ಸಹ ಅಸ್ಮಿ ನಮೋ ಗುರವೇ ನ ಗುರೋ ಪರಮಂ ಶಿಶುರಸ್ಮಿ ಗುರೋರ್ಮತಿರಸ್ತಿ ಗುರೌ ಮಮ ಪಾಹಿ ಗುರೋ ರಾಮ್ 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 ಸೊ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಸೂಕ್ತಿ ರತ್ನಾನಿ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ದಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸೂಕ್ತಿ ರತ್ನ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಿ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸೂಕ್ತಿ ರತ್ನ ಇಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಕಾಳಿದಾಸ ಮೇಘದೂತಂ so megha duta is one of those prominent works written by kalidasa and again we have had the opportunity of visiting kalidasa's life and works in various aspects abhignana shakuntalam rakuvamsham kumar sambhavam and again we have another golden opportunity to discuss about kalidasa through megha dutam regarding megha dutam there is a very beautiful sentence told by a very great kavi meghe maghe gatam vaya so meghe that is in megha duta maghe in reading ಮಾಘ ಶಿಶುಪಾಲವದ ಗತಂ ವಯ ಯರ್ ಏಜ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಬಟ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಹೌ ಮಚ್ ಯು ಹವ್ ಲರ್ನ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸ್ಪೆಂಡ್ ಯರ್ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಮೇಘದೂತ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಮಾಘ ಶಿಶುಪಾಲವದ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಯು ಮೇ ಫೀಲ್ ಅನರ್ಜ್ ಆರ್ ಯು ನೋ ಅ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಲರ್ನ್ ಈವನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಎನಿ ನಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಯು ರೀಡ್ ಮೇಘದೂತ ಈಚ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಹೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಮೇಘೆ ಮಾಘೆ ಗತಂ ವಯ ಮೇಘದೂತ ಇಸ್ ಅಖಂಡ ಕಾವ್ಯ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಟೂ ಮಹಾಕಾವ್ಯ ಸೆಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರಘುವಂಶಂ ಎಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಕುಮಾರ ಸಂಭವಂ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಮೇಘದೂತ ಕಮ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಖಂಡ ಕಾವ್ಯ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಪೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಕಾವ್ಯ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಫಿಕ್ಷನಲ್ ಯೂಶಲಿ ಅ ಫಿಕ್ಷನ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಕವಿ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನೈದರ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಹಿಸ್ಟಾರಿಕ್ ಇವೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ನಾರ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಇತಿಹಾಸ ಆರ್ ಪುರಾಣ ಸೆನ್ತಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ದಿ ಫಿಗ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕವಿ ಬಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಮೇಘದೂತ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫಾಲ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ದಿ ಕೆಟಗರಿ ಆಫ್ ಖಂಡ ಕಾವ್ಯ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ದಿ ಕೆಟಗರಿ ಆಫ್ ಗೀತ ಕಾವ್ಯ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಂಪೋಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಮಂದಾಕ್ರಾಂತ ಛಂದಸ್ ಸೊ ಛಂದಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋಟ್ ಟೋಟ್ಲಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಬಟ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಯು ಮೇ ಹವ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಅನುಷ್ಟು ಅಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಛಂದಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಮೇಘದೂತ ಇಸ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಇನ್ ಮಂದಾಕ್ರಾಂತ ಛಂದಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಂದಾಕ್ರಾಂತ ಛಂದಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ you can sing it in different formats like you can apply different musical tones and sing it hence since it is a singable format it is called geeta kavya it's a it's also called duta kavya because we'll come to the why it is called duta kavya later on but this also comes under the category of duta kavya further it also comes under pravasa kavya so it gives a details of several places that you can visit hence it's also come it also comes under pravasa kavya so kalidasa's greatness is brought about in this work because he not only wrote a khanda kavya he has written a work that can fall under any of these categories duta kavya geeta kavya khanda kavya or pravas kavya now megha duta is divided into two parts purva megha and uttara megha so these are the two parts so similarly we have seen sargas in you know mahakavyas we have seen anka sin natakas etc so in this particular khanda kavya format it is divided into purva megha and uttara megha we'll come to the background story so every plot every now you know work will have a background plot so first first we'll discuss what is the background plot here so the kubera's kingdom is called alakapuri and it is a place where yakshas live one of the yakshas has been told you know he is he has the duty of collecting fresh flowers for kubera to worship lord shiva so his only duty is every morning he should pick a flower, you know he should pick flowers freshly and he he should give it to kubera for worshiping but on one of these days he is very lazy to get up in the morning so what he'll do is he would have plucked the flowers the previous night itself and he would have taken it when kubera comes to know this he is very angry about the you know laziness displayed by this um, yaksha so what he'll do is he'll punish him telling that you are banished from alakapuri for one year so yaksha has a yakshini his wife is called yakshini like any uh, you know uh, wife of yaksha is called a yakshini so they both are very close to each other but what this yaksha has done is that he has separated the yaksha from the yakshini for one per, one whole year and he has been asked to you know come on earth as a mortal now the yaksha has already spent 8 months in separation he is very eager because you know they both were so close that he fears that if he does not go back in time there
that gives the name mega duta and hence this is a duta vakya duta kavya because there is a messenger involved in this hence it's called a duta kavya and uh, this beautiful scenario describes the you know this mega duta describes a beautiful scenario in which firstly how yaksha gets the idea of you know approaching the clouds secondly what does he inform him so what are the things that the you know yaksha tells to the clouds very beautifully that is described and finally what is the end result that is what is included in the total mega duta now coming to the two parts purva mega as well as uttara mega what is described in each of these let us look into that purva mega so this part is where the yaksha has decided to approach the cloud to be his messenger and it describes in detail about so this particular yaksha is residing in a particular place and this you know the cloud has to go from that point till alakapuri in that alakapuri to the his wife's house that is his house where his wife is residing and give the message so the first part purva megha goes into detailed descriptions of the path that the megha should follow the cloud what is the path that it should follow that is deeply described in, by kalidasa in purva megha and in uttara megha that is the part where the yaksha actually gives what is the message that the you know cloud has to go and deliver to his wife so this is a very beautiful way of describing because you should understand what kalidasa has told in such a beautiful way is whenever you are giving directions make sure that you give the directions in a very precise way don't give vague directions for example if someone asks you for you know the how to reach your house from some point you should not tell uh, ask someone come to this point ask someone come to this point no you should be very clear when you give directions and that is what kalidasa has beautifully told throughout meghaduta so he tells so you know the you know coming to the intricacies of meghaduta so he tell if you go in this direction you will find this particular place so that is like a landmark so once you reach that landmark you go further one more thing you should think of is so if the journey is very long let us say it is a not just one day journey or a, no like not a one hour journey if the journey lasts for several days then you should also understand that the messenger should rest he should also sleep and he'll also feel hungry he'll also feel thirsty so at every point you should tell him that you you can eat at this point you can drink at this point you can rest at this point because not every place is safe to rest not every place is good or healthy to eat here kalidasa has beautifully told so he you know guide the megha telling that please go in this direction after traveling for the entire day this is a very good spot for you to rest and if you feel thirsty there is a very you no know, sweet water river where you can drink from so he will give so many such beautiful you know information for the megha to follow so the rather than just giving information and not you know thinking about the comfort of the messenger kalidasa tells when you are sending a duta when you are sending a messenger always think of his welfare also make sure that he knows where to rest where to eat etc and finally the you know information he gives also is very beautifully told so this is what entire megha duta deals with again we'll go back to what we discussed in uh, kumara sambha asti kashchit vag visheshah so this beautiful scenario we have discussed in kumara sambha and you can you know, re, you know visit that video to see what this beautiful statement is about so in this particular sentence we have already seen asti kumara sambha starts with astyuttarasya andishideyavat atma himalayo na managadhi rajah ूतावित ूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतमूतम
Astangamita Mahima, his powers have diminished. That is, he does not have the powers of the Yaksha. So Yakshas can probably travel faster, they can travel in air, etc. But he does not have any such powers because of this curse. Further, where is he living? Ramagiri Ashrameshu. So he is living in Ramagiri Ashrama. So that is in Chitrakuta, in the Ashrama where Rama had lived. In that particular Ashrama, even this Yaksha is living. And where is he living? Uh, in the shades of the tree. And how are these trees? They are, they are the trees that were grown by Sita. So this Yaksha, who is separated from his wife for one year due to the curse of Kubera, resides in Ramagiri Ashrama under the shade of the trees grown by Sita. So again, in the very first shloka itself, you can realize the Prakriti Kavi aspect of Kalidasa. Every you know, Kavya that you have, that you have encountered, Ragomsham, Kumara, Samavam, and now Rutas, you know, Meghadutam, all these three describe about how important it is to plant trees. There, Parvati, when she went for doing tapas, first thing she did was planted trees. And in Raghuvamsham, if you see, there, you know, um, uh, we, have, we have come across where, you know, the uh, trees are being uh, nurtured like by Parvati. So, in Diripa Varanam comes. So, here also, the first thing that, you know, Kaldasa brings is the trees that were, you know, grown by Sita, which were similar to her sons. Now, as I've told you, eight months have already passed. The rainy season is arriving. And th so, the Yaksha is anxious to send a message to his wife. Yakshini. So on the first day of Ashada, he sees the clouds coming in. So the beginning of Ashada is when the clouds start to accumulate. So now he has seen the clouds that are, you know, uh, have come in the sky. And what is happening? They are going and striking the mountain. And Kalilasa thinks that it is like, you know, a play that is happening. It's like a game that is, you know, happening between the mountain and the clouds. So now the Yaksha has has been thinking of sending a message and he does not know with whom to send because he has no one whom he can speak to and he has he personally does not have the power to go and communicate it with Yakshini. So what he finally decides is he decides to ask the cloud for help. So he holds Kutaja flowers. So Kutaja is a type of flower. So he holds it in his arms, in his hands and like he's trying to welcome. So whenever you welcome a guest, you know, you try a flower, sh shower flowers on them. So to you know, welcome that Megha, to, to uh, welcome that cloud, this particular Yaksha holds Kutaja flowers in his um, hands and he does Atiti Satkara. So he starts welcoming the uh, cloud with Kutaja flowers. Dhumajyotisalilamarutamsannipatakvamegha <laughs> And at this point of time, Kalidasa mentions this beautiful shloka. What is he telling? So on one side, so Dhuma, smoke, Jyoti, light, Salila, water, Marut, wind. So on one side is this Megha, the cloud that is made up of all these things, inanimate objects like smoke, wind, water, and light. And on the other side, what do you need in a very good uh, duta? He should be very good in speaking. So he should be able to convey your message beautifully. But where is the cloud which is made out of all these, you know, inanimate and, you know, uh, lifeless objects like smoke, light, water, etc. And where is the necessity of a duta who can speak very well? But even though the yaksha has to know about this, but a person who is filled with desire or who wants some desire to be fulfilled legally, he does not differentiate between the living and the non-living. Kripana, Chetana, Achetaneshu. He does not differentiate. He does not, he forgets the difference between living and non-living. So here, Kalidas has told that since he is so deep in desire, he wants to eagerly send a message to his wife, Yakshini. He does not even think that a messenger should be someone who is good at speaking. He has gone and approached something that is made out of these things like Dhuma, Jyoti, Sarina, and Marut. Then, also, you know, further he tells, no, 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 again, whenever you want your work to be done by someone, what do you do? You praise that person. So here also, the Yaksha starts praising the cloud. What does he tell? Jatambam she bhuvana vidite pushkara vartakana jana mitvam prakriti purusham kama rupam maghonaha tenar chitvam tvai vidhivasha dura bandhur katoham yancha mogha varamadhi gune nadhame labdha kama. So here comes the sukti that we have to discuss. Of course, I could have kept it in the end, but since the flow is abrupted, you know, I stopped if I don't tell it here, hence I've included it in the explanation itself. So here, the Yaksha starts praising the cloud. What does he tell? 
jatam vamshe bhuvana vidide so i know that you are born in a very good clan in a very noble clan of pushkaravartaka so pushkaravarta is a type of clouds which is told to be very you know pious and very holy so people worship pushkaravarta clouds to help them get rains so whenever uh, you know you know rains are not available they worship this type of clouds so the yaksha saying that oh cloud i know that you are born in the very great clan in which even pushkaravarta clouds are born and janami tvam prakriti purusham kama roopam maghona and how are you you are the person whom even indra comes and approaches whenever he wants to shower rains so whenever indra wants to fulfill the wish of showering rains it is you whom he remembers to shower rain so you are that great person that even indra comes and approaches tenarthitvam tvai vidivesha thens i who have been separated from my wife yakshini have approached you with a request because you are so great i have approached you but why have i approached only you yancha mogha varam adhigune nadhame labdha kama yancha so if any request if i want to you know here kalidasa gives a very important lesson in life so he is telling that a request that is asked from a good person a noble person and if that is rejected or if he does not fulfill that desire that is better than getting the request fulfilled by anadhama a low person uttamarinda puraisal padada ichchayu adhamarinda puraisal patta ichchayintalu melu it is better for your request to be rejected by a good person rather than it being fulfilled by a bad person very beautiful line he tells so he is saying that since i know that you are a great person i have come to ask you even if you tell you don't want to do i am happy because i have asked a very great person like you having told this he tell ಸಂತಪ್ತಾಂಗ್ಯಾಸ್ತಿರಲಕಾನಾಮ everyone who is sad approaches you so you are such a type of karuna uh, you are such a type of dayalu hence i have come and asked you and what is my request sandesham me hara please take my message to dhanadhipa krodha visleshitasya so me who has been separated by my yakshini because of the curse given by kubera i ask you to please take my message and go to alakapuri and hence there go and deliver it to my wife further he tell that your path will not be disturbed so clouds usually move in a particular path so based on the events and the you know season clouds either move along the north or they move along the west based on the westerly southerly easterly based on the winds they move and here the yaksha yaksha is you know confirming or he is you know telling that don't worry your path won't be disturbed you shall surely reach whatever is your you know uh, path you'll go in the same path but all i'm asking you is on the way please go meet your brother self so here again kalidasa's beauty is again told here if you speak for some you know with some stranger for some time he becomes your friend if you speak for him for longer time he even becomes a relative so by this time yaksha has started calling the cloud as his brother so he's saying that oh cloud you don't worry your path will not be obstructed you will surely go in your same path but in the in the you know way itself please go meet your brother's wife that is yakshini he is calling as brother's wife so please go meet your brother's wife and please give her hope and courage and that is all i am asking of you ಮಂದಂ ಮಂದಂ ನುದತಿ ಪವನಶ್ಚಾನುಕೂಲೋ ಯಥಾತ್ವಾಂ ವಾಮಶ್ಚಾ ನದತಿ ಮಧುರ ಚಾತಕಸ್ತೆ ಸಗಂಧ ಗರ್ಭಾಧಾನ ಕ್ಷಣ ಪರಿಚಯಾನ್ನೂನಮಾಬ್ಧಮಾಲಾ ಸೇವಿಷ್ಯಂತೆ ನಯನ ಸುಭಗ ಖೇ ಭವಂತ ಬಲಾಕ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಹಿ ಸ್ಟಲಿಂಗ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ವರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಮೇಕ್ ಶ್ಯೂರ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಕಂಫರ್ಟಬಲ್ ಇನ್ ಯರ್ ಜರ್ನಿ ಹೌ ವಿಲ್ ಯು ಬಿ ಕಂಫರ್ಟಬಲ್ ಮಂದಂ ಮಂದಂ ನುದತಿ ಪವನ ಸೊ ಶ್ಯೂರ್ಲಿ ಸೂದಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನೋ a uh, cool breeze will always be blowing on top of you to maintain you in comfort zone further chatakas these chataka birds will surely you know continue to sing melodiously as you move to please you in addition to this cranes balakas these cranes these beautiful crane birds will you know crane of they you know they'll fly next to you on the right as well as left in different formations and the people who see you will be amazed by how beautiful you are so in that way i'll make sure that you're comfortable there won't be any problem to your comfort so having told all this he'll tell you are a cloud 
just by thundering if you just thunder you have the power to make this earth fertile indirectly he's saying that if you thunder you will shower rains and just by that rains this entire earth which would have previously been barren it will become uh, you know as fertile to even grow new plants and raja hamsa so raja hamsa is considered to be one of the best you know varieties of swans so he's saying that even the raja hamsas will accompany you till they reach manas sarovara so it's told that raja hamsas they go and reside always in manas sarovara so he's saying that you know in a you know to add your to your beauty further to make you more beautiful even the raja hamsas will accompany you till you reach manas sarovara so please uh, you know uh, you know accept my request and go in the path that i tell you further kalidas a beautifully tells it so till this point of time we have discussed that the ashada clouds have started playing in a manner with the mountain so he's telling that so i have understood that in this very short time you have become very good friends with this mountain so you have been playing a lot of games you know you have been enjoying yourself but i please request you to you know hug this mountain that is give it the final embrace and please leave this i know it is very difficult for you to separate with this friend new friend called the mountain but please hug him and shed tears through rains and please go in the path that i am telling you so beautifully kalidasa mentions this that please take leave from your friend mountain and go further by shedding some tears of joy and tears of separation now the yaksha tells it okay now o cloud please listen to the path that you have to follow to go from here till the place where my wife resides and then i will tell you the message so first i will tell you the directions and then i will you know give you the message that you should deliver further in this path i will tell you every mountain and every place where you can take rest and every river from which you can drink to quench your thirst so first and from here beautiful descriptions start so you should understand how much of geography and how much of places kalidasa would have visited in order to create such a beautiful work so from this point the description of the path starts so very first he starts telling so o cloud now go high in the sky and from there go north when you go north the first thing you will see is the are the wife of siddhas ready to prepare for the worship and they'll be residing in the mountain of chitrakuta so even the ramagiri ashrama is in the same place so if you go a little more north the first thing you will see is the wives of siddhas or the sages who are you know preparing to worship so first thing you see is this then in that particular direction you'll find a very big ant hill and that will point that that will be an indication that you're going in the right direction and please proceed further after seeing that ant hill there you will fall you know you'll reach the province of mala and how will you recognize mala the fields of this mala province have been freshly plowed so recently only the people have plowed this land so that will be an indication that you have reached the province of mala there just take a small detour take a small turn to the west after traveling a very small distance after crossing this province again continue going north next after having gone north you will find a mountain called amrakuta and as the name itself says it's a mountain famous for growing several types of mountains so this amrakuta has a problem or always these you know trees that are going on amrakuta they are you know prone to forest fires so yaksha saying that so once you reach amrakuta please shower your rains to extinguish the forest fire and hence by doing this the mountain will become very pleased in you and he'll welcome you as a friend so at that point at amrakuta please rest take rest and there once you take rest also enjoy the fragrance you know take in the fragrance of the mangoes and you know enjoy it thoroughly but once you have rested please don't waste time and please continue going further and once you go there you will find reva so the river reva is flowing just after you know this mountain of amrakota but she has become very weak here kalidas is saying that there has been no rains previously so the rivers have become very shallow and thin so kalidas is saying that the rivers have become very weak and hence please once you go there shower your rains and please rejuvenate her and make her strong again and further here kalidasa tells a beautiful point that antasaram ghana tulaitum nana nani lakshyati tvam rikta sarvo bhavati hi lagu purnata gauravaya so at this point once you have showered all your water as rain you may have become empty but even when you are empty the winds will not push you away they will not be capable of push you away push, pushing you away because even though you have become empty on the inside by losing water you have gained respect by you know helping this reva mountain so much that you have gained respect which will become so heavy that even the winds cannot push you further and they won't bother you so please be assured that you will you will gain a lot of respect by helping river reva then further after having reached this point 
how will you know how to go further? What will happen is at this point, there will be a lot of bees, deers and elephants. What are they doing? They have been attracted to the fragrance of the fresh, freshly bloomed Kadamba and Kandali flowers. So Kadamba and Kandali flowers have bloomed somewhere and that fragrance is so attractive that all the bees, deers and elephants are going towards that you know, smell in one direction. Please follow the direction that these animals are following. That will show you the path to go further. After reaching there, you know, um, I know. So here again, Kalidasa at every point, what he'd make sure that so whenever there is a situation, so, you know, some person will ask you for help. He'll tell, ah, I know you can do it, but still I'm asking you in a similar way in order to further boost the confidence and make sure that the Megha will do the work that it is being told. What Kalidasa beautifully tells by the mouth of Yaksha is, see, oh Megha, I know you're a very good friend of mine. You want to eagerly do my work. You want to as quickly as possible, go, you know, to your Alakapuri and give my message. But I am sad that at every point, mountains will you know, obstruct you, you know, the, you know, sweet fragrance of Kurja flowers will obstruct you and they'll attract you. But I know you want to eagerly go and deliver my message, but still you'll have some obstructions. So please uh, make sure that you're not, you know, deterred or deferred by, you're deterred by your uh, determination. Then once you have crossed this, you know, uh, once you have got the direction from the deers, elephants, etc., you will reach the province of Dasharana. And in Dasharana, how will you recognize Dasharana? So there is, there are huge farms, very huge farms, not just one or two farms. There are huge farms where Ketaka flowers are glowing, glowing, you know, have bloomed recently. And in the ponds of this particular region, you have a lot of swans. And in the trees also, you find a lot of swans. So this will be an indication that you have reached the province of Dasharana. So once you reach Dasharana, continue moving north. And then you will reach a place called and you leave the capital of Dasharana called Vidisha. So Vidisha is the capital of Dasharana. How will you identify Dasharana? By the large number of Ketaka flowers and the swans that are residing in the ponds and trees. Continue further and then you will reach the capital of Dasharana called Vidisha. And when reaching, after having reached Vidisha, you would have become very thirsty because you have already shed all your water by helping river Reva. So now you are thirsty. So once you reach this Vidisha, you can drink from the waters of Vetravati. So Vetravati is a river that is flowing here. So you can drink its water, sweet water, and you can quench your thirst. Then after having done this, you have, you know, again, you should, you need some rest. You have traveled so far. So go and rest on the mountains of Nicha. So Nicha is a particular mountain that is here. You can go and rest there. And there you will have to, you know, you'll have the pleasure of, you know, being greeted by so many Kadamba trees. Further, continue going. After taking rest, please start your journey again. And when you go, you will reach the banks of Vananadi. So Vananadi is a river that you will reach after crossing Vetravati. There on the banks of river, you know, river uh, Vananadi, there are a lot of jasmine flowers and they have not received any waters by rains. So please make sure that as you pass this Vananadi, shower your rains and help these jasmine flowers bloom. Further, he'll tell that after crossing Vananadi, your path will become very you know, difficult. So it will have a lot of twists, turns, and it will become a very serpentine route. But please don't feel bad because I want you to follow this path only. So your path from here won't be a straight path. You'll have to take a lot of turns, curves, etc. But still, try to keep maintaining your path. Why? Because after having taken this path, you will reach the mountains on the outskirts of Ujjaini. And why did I ask you to take this route? I know this route is very difficult to, you know, go, but still I'm asking you to go in this particular route because I want you to see the city of Ujjaini. You, I want you to see the city, the buildings, the beautiful women who are living in this city, because if you don't see the city of Ujjaini, then you haven't seen anything in your life and your existence itself will become fruitless. So since I want you to experience the beauty of Ujjaini, I'm asking you to take this route. And actually, Seeing the description that Kalidasa has given about Ujjaini in Meghaduta, that is why people, several people tell that he's probably born in Ujjain or some people tell that he spent most of his life in Ujjain because his description of Ujjaini is so beautiful and so, you know, proper to the point. Further, after having reached the outskirts of Ujjaini, go further. There you will see River Sindhu. She has also become very weak and pale because she has not received waters. So please, shower waters and, you know, make, you know, Sindhu Nadi again become rejuvenated. Here, Prapyavanti Nudayana Katha Kovida Grama Vridhan Purvo Dishta Mupasara Purim Shri Vishalam Vishalam Svalpi Bhute Sucharita Phale Svargi Nam Gangatanam Sheshaif Punyer Hritam Ivadivaha 
Kantimat Khanda Mekam. And after having crossed Ujjaini, so now we have reached Ujjaini, further go, you know, uh, again, continue in the same direction and cross Ujjaini. There you will come to the city of Avanti. And how will you identify Avanti? So I've told you, you know, how will you uh, identify Ujjain? Because of the peaks, because of the beautiful buildings and because of the beautiful women who are living here. But how will you identify that you have reached Avanti? When you reach Avanti, you can hear to the elders of the village. Kovita uh, Grama Vridhan. So Grama Vridhas, these elders of the city, what will they be discussing? They will be discussing the stories of Udayana. So King Udayana. Who is Udayana? He's the same Udayana who has come in Sapna Vasadattam as well as Pratigna Yogandarayana, who, marries, who married Vasavadatta. So the same Udayana. These people of Avanti, the elders of Avanti, they will keep discussing the uh, stories of Udayana. And that is one indication that you have reached this city called Avanti. After having reached Avanti, continue further. And when you go ahead, you will see, you know, you will be met with the city or you will reach the city of Vishala. And how is this Vishala? Kardasa beautifully tells that Diva Kanti Matkhanda Mekam, this Vishala city looks like a piece of heaven. So as the someone who is living in heaven has brought or, you know, broken a piece of heaven and he has placed it on earth and that portion of, you know, um, heaven itself is this place called Vishala. So please visit that city, which looks like a piece of heaven. Then after having crossed Vishala as well, you will reach the city, you will reach the river called Shipra. And that Shipra is actually, you know, so, you know because of the, the Shipra is a very cool river and it is spreading cool breeze everywhere for the people, the flowers and the trees. Then after having crossed Shipra, you will reach the banks of the ocean. And how is this Sagara? So we know Sagara is you know filled with Ratnas. Ratnakara is what he's called. So he's filled with gems, conches, uh, corals, etc. So here Kalidasa beautifully tells that that Sagara. So whenever a wave comes, what does it do? It brings some corals or some shells and deposits on the bank. So here Kalidasa tells that then you will come across the then you'll come to the banks of the Sagara. And how is this Sagara? He has expelled or he has thrown out all the gems, corals, you know, conches, everything. And now he has as though he's just only with water. He does not have any gem scores. He's just, you know, empty with just water. So that type of sagara or some ocean you will see. Further, the people here in this place are well versed in narrating the stories of, again, Udayana. So even these, this place also, the people are very good at, you know, telling the stories of Udayana. And they, you know, if you go there, you can hear people telling, oh, here is the place where Udayana took the, you know, daughter of um, Pradyota and he ran away. This is the place where he fought with, uh, you know, uh, the king Pradyota. So all those stories you'll come across. So when you listen to these words, then you can understand that you've reached the right spot. So the people of this place also are, you know, deep, deeply discussing the stories of Udayana. After having crossed this region, you'll see Ganas. So Shiva Ganas, the Ganas are the followers of Shiva. You will see them. And how are they? They're looking at you respectfully. But why are they looking at you respectfully? Because your color is same as the color of Bhasma that Shiva applies. So your color matches with the color of the Bhasma that Shiva applies. Hence, they look at you respectfully and with folded hands. And once you reach this place, you will see the temple of Shiva. Around this temple of Shiva, there are gardens which are watered by the river Gandhavati. And which is this Shiva temple? It is none other than Mahakaleshwara. So the temple of Shiva called Mahakaleshwara is this temple that I'm speaking about. Further, he'll tell that, I know, you know, based on how fast you go or how slowly you go, you can reach, you know, this Mahakaleshwara in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, sometime. But what I request you is, whatever be the time that you reach Mahakaleshwara temple, I ask you to stay there till evening. Why? Because in the evening, the evening puja is performed and it is told that just by seeing this evening puja done to Mahakaleshwara, all your wishes are fulfilled. So here, you should understand something important here. Why is Yaksha asking him to stay there? He knows, you no, know, Yaksha wants the message to reach his wife as soon as possible. But why is he telling him to stay? Why is he telling the Megha to stay there? Because you should also understand that even the Yaksha wants his, you know, work to be done successfully. Hence, in order to get the blessings of Mahakala, because, you know, the cloud is what is doing the work. So if that work has to be done without any obstacles, then even the, you know, uh, Shiva's blessings should be given to the cloud. So he's telling that, please go and, you know, be a part of the evening puja so that even your work will be fulfilled indirectly telling that even my work will be fulfilled. So that is why the Yaksha tells it, please stay there for evening puja and please make sure that you see the evening puja because seeing the 
evening puja of mahakaleshwara fulfills all your desires then further he tells that after having seen mahakaleshwara temple when you go further you will see a lot of buildings so make sure that you rest on the terrace because you know there won't be any mountains around so since it's a city so please go and rest on the top of any of the terraces of the house along with your wife lightning so lightning here kalidasa has beautifully imagined that lightning is the wife of the cloud so please go and stay there with your wife lightning so indirectly he's saying that so when does lightning and cloud come together when there should be rain so here in indirectly he's saying that please shower your rains in that place and further you continue so once this is done you take rest and in the morning but once the sun rises please without any delay continue on your work and again here he is further telling that mandayante na khalu suhradam abhyupete abhyupet artha krityah so he is telling that i know surely that someone who has taken to you know someone who has agreed to fulfill a friend's desire will never become lazy so he is telling that in the morning without delay go further he is just adding that i don't want to tell you anything because i know you are a great person so you know that if a person has agreed to do some job surely he will never you know become lazy or tired so i know you will go but still i am telling you that in the morning please continue on your journey further after having you know um, gone uh, further after having taken rest and gone further you will come to the waters of gambhira so gambhira is a river and once you reach there you quench your thirst in the waters of gambhira and here again kalidasa tells it so just by drinking water from gambhira you will become very close to her and will you will become very attached to her but still i request you please bear the separation from her and go further on your path further after having gone further from gambhira you will reach the mountain called devagiri and whose place is this devagiri this devagiri is the place where skanda or shanmukha has become he has you know take he has become uh, established so he has established himself in this devagiri and what should you do there once you reach devagiri please make sure that you shower enormous amounts of rain and also create a lot of sound by thundering why because if you do if you shower rains and if you create thunder then the peacock of skanda will become very happy and it will start dancing and seeing the peacock dance so happily even skanda will become happy so again indirectly saying that if skanda is happy your work will be fulfilled indirectly my work is also fulfilled so that is the intention of yaksha then once you have crossed devagiri and gone some distance you will see some siddhas or sages and at that point you should go and shower a lot of rain why should you shower a lot of rain because that place where these siddhas are sitting is the place where the great king ranti deva lived so one more deviation a small deviation that i will talk about is ranti deva so who is this ranti deva so ranti deva is actually a very famous bhakta of vishnu so once when the devatas go and ask vishnu who is your greatest bhakta vishnu would have told ranti deva so the devatas they would have wanted to come and test ranti deva so what they do is so ranti deva's kingdom is very prosperous everyone is very happy and he is ruling in a very righteous way but in order to test him what these devatas do is they stop you know they you know, the rivers become dry the land becomes bare and there is a famine so people don't have anything to eat as well so what uh, seeing this what happens is ranti deva is very moved so what he does is he gives the whatever is the food and food grains that are in the kingdom he start distributing it to everyone so initially ranti deva as any you know person he will be eating three meals a day but when you know the people start becoming hungry and the need is more he will come down to just one meal a day finally in the end stages probably you know it is told that the you know this situation lasted for 6 to 7 years so till that point of time he constantly gave away all the food grains and food and made sure that the people are happy in the end in the point when he also has nothing to eat the ministers get him one plate of food and one glass of water so he is sitting so the ministers are seeing he has become very weak because he is eating only one time a day and he is you know totally you know um, he is troubled by the problems that the people are facing so they get that one plate of food and one glass of water for him to eat but even before he starts to eat one brahmin so one of the devatas dressed as a brahmin he'll come and tell oh king i don't have anything to eat so please give me so what he'll do is he'll give half of the food to that brahmana so the ministers are all thinking that he should have eaten one full plate but he is now has only half so even before someone comes please let him eat so they ask the king please start eating please start eating even before he puts the food in his mouth another chandala he comes with his dog he'll give half of the remaining part of the food to the chandala but what happens the dog keeps staring at ranti deva think you know, like it, it's asking for food so what does ranti deva do he finally gives even the remaining half to the dog so it's told that yama in the form of a chandala and the dog they came so again someone else devatas came as the form of chandala so he had to give half of the food to chandala and the remaining half to the dog so now what does he have he just has a dra- glass of water hence 
when he's about to even drink that another devata comes in the form of another brahmin and he tells it i've been you know dying from thirst for you know i've been dying from thirst so please give me some water so finally ranti deva even gives that last glass of water that he had also to him and be seeing how generous he is the devatas are very pleased and even vishnu appears before him and he blesses him so this is you know a story about ranti deva and that is why in bhagavad gita whenever you read patram pushpam phalam toyam that toyam whenever you know you read tippani or some extra points about that a story of ranti deva comes into picture so here that is ranti deva so the yaksha is saying that the place where the siddhas are doing worship is the place where ranti deva lived so in order to respect the greatness of ranti deva please shower rain after having done this you will reach the place called dashapura and after going you know, across dashapura you will reach brahmavarta so you reach the place called brahmavarta and what is the greatness of this brahmavarta so this brahmavarta is the place previously called kurukshetra where the kauravas and pandavas had fought the great battle of mahabharata and hence he tells that this is the place where arjuna had showered rain of arrows so this is the place so please go there and shower your rain as well further after crossing this brahmavarta or kurukshetra you will reach the river saraswati and please quench your uh, thirst by drinking water from saraswati which is the river protected by balarama then you will when you go further you will reach the daughter of janhu janhavi or ganga who is descending from himalayas at and where will you first see ganga at the mountain kanakhala so kanakhala is the place is the mountain where you will first encounter ganga and who is this ganga she is the river who became the staircase for sagara sagara's sons so she became indirectly saying that she is the river who gave moksha to sagara's sons please once you see this ganga make sure that you drink the purified water or the pure water of ganga and then you will you know continue to go further and at this point of time the yaksha beautifully tells that your reflection is falling on ganga how is this this is a very beautiful scene and how is it it is similar to how ganga meets yamuna at sangama so in literature if you see of course if you see geographically also the places where ganga flows actually has white sand so the river appears to be white and wherever yamuna flows it has dark sand so it has you know stones gravel etc so in sanskrit literature you know ganga is called sitamambu white waters and you know uh, yamuna is called kajjala ambu that is black water so if you read there is a very beautiful you know work in uh, called rajahamsa when you read kovida so in kovida there is a particular lesson called rajahamsa wherein this you know matter is again dis- discussed it is told that ganga is white and yamuna is black so when they meet the, at the sangama it is as though it is becoming gray in color and since the cloud is also gray in color the yaksha is saying that your reflection falling on ganga will create an effect of ganga meeting yamuna at the sangama then after you move further you will see the source of ganga so till now you have just seen one of the points where ganga can be seen but now you will see the actual source of ganga which is the himalayas and how is this himalaya it is covered in snow it is filled with the fragrance of musk deer and uh, you know after having these himalayas i'll ask you to please stay there and take some rest because this himalayas is very good at soothing your fatigue that is you you know your fatigue or your tiredness will go away if you rest on himalayas and at this point of time the on the slopes of himalayas you will see the trees of sarala and what is the peculiarity of this sarala trees they are very dry so when they start rubbing the when the branches of the tree start rubbing against each other it will generate forest fire so they easily easily catch fire and create forest fire so the yaksha is saying that so please when you are going through himalayas if you see these sarala trees causing a forest fire please extinguish please extinguish these forest fire uh, because always here kalidasa beautifully tells it apannarti prashamana phala sampado hitamana so what is the quality of good people the quality of good people is they always try to remove the problems and the sorrow of others so that is why i know you are also a great person so surely you will when you when you see this sarala trees creating a forest fire you will quench but still being some you know i'm just giving you some you know story so please listen to me so if you see forest fire in the sarala trees please extinguish them with your waters so in this way it is then you will further when you go further you will again come across the kailasa mountain where you will see the footprints of shiva and all the siddhas and ganas are worshiping lord shiva and how is the you know beautiful scenario of this uh, scenery of himalayas there are several bamboo trees the wind that is flowing through these bamboo trees it is creating very sweet music and the ganas so the kinnaras they are singing the you know stories of shiva how he won over tripura so that story is also you can hear from the voice of kinnaras further if you go on north 
then you reach Kailasa, which was once shaken by Ravana. And then further you'll see Manasa Sarovara. So once reaching Manasa Sarovara, please, you know, you know, stay there and drink some water from Manasa Sarovara because only if you do drink water from Manasa Sarovara, you'll enjoy the complete beauty of Himalayas. Then further, once you go beyond the you know, Manasa Sarovara, that is where you will come across Alakapuri. So that is where you'll come across your destination Alakapuri. And that is where Ganga flows. That is where you have beautiful palaces and mansions. And that is where beautiful women roam around the city. So in this way, the directions, beautifully Kalidasa gives, sir, Yaksha gives the directions from Ramagiri Ashrama to Alakapuri. And this ends Purva Mekha. So Uttara Mekha, we will, you know, Uttara Mekha is actually a quite shorter part. So we will go through Uttara Mekha now. So first thing that he starts describing is Alakapuri. So first he should tell how Alakapuri is. So he'll tell that. So Alakapuri has a lot of tall mansions and tall towers and they're as high as how you are. Further, they have beautiful paintings and they're so colorful, similar to how your rainbow is. And further, they have all the floors of Alakapuri are decorated with blue sapphire, which, sim which are similar to the water that you hold. So he's comparing Alakapuri to the cloud by telling that it has towers as high as you are which has colorful paintings similar to the colorful rainbow that you create. And it has blue sapphires on the floors, which is similar to the blue water that you carry. Further, here the women, how are the women here? They are wearing garlands made out of shirisha flowers. They have earrings made out of lotuses and they have hairs that are decorated with kurabhaka flowers. And here, the flowers, the, what is the beauty of Alakapuri? The trees here, flower throughout the year. So there is no shedding of flowers. There is no drying of flowers and nothing. It is eternally throughout the year. The flowers will keep on be, the trees will keep on flowering, you know, flowers and the birds will keep on constantly chirping melodious um, tunes. The swans will keep on swimming in the ponds filled with lotuses and the nights are always, you know, lit by moon. So here we have Amavasya, Purnima and the moon keeps on shifting. But in Alakapuri, the moon is always there in the night. It does not wax or wane. Further, you will see that you know um, the clouds. So again, if you you know think about any hill station like Kulu, Manali, or Kashmir, what happens is if you keep your windows open, the clouds, since you know it's a very you know tall place, the altitude is very high. The clouds can actually you know you can feel them hitting your face, and it can also enter into the houses if the windows are open. And what happens once it comes into the house, it will condense into water, and you can you know find water everywhere if you leave your windows open. Kalidasa beautifully uses this geographical aspect and tells that. So this is where the clouds enter into the palaces of yakshas. And then after it condenses, what does the water do? So these yakshas have decorated their palaces with paintings, but the water will fall on these paintings and it will destroy them. But once condensed, there is no evidence that the cloud came in or went. So silently the clouds will exit. So such a beautiful place this Alakapuri is. And there is a very beautiful garden called Vaibharaja. Vaibharaja is the garden of the uh, Alakapuri and here Kinnaras are always singing glories of Kubera and um, further you have the you know the guards of Alakapuri and they're very you know here he tells that the guards of Alakapuri are very strong and were considered one of the greatest warriors because when Ravana had come to you know uh, plunder uh, Alakapuri these guards were the people who you know, boldly and bravely stood in the path of Ravana and hence their bodies are bruised with the Chandrahasa of Ravana and um, from this point, he tells, so having reached Alakapuri, so this will tell you, this will indicate that you have reached Alakapuri, but once you have reached Alakapuri, what you should do is, there is Kuvera's palace in the middle. In the, to the north of this palace, you'll see a house whose entrance or the you know, doorway is in the form of a rainbow. And outside this house is a mandara tree. And who's, who has grown this mandara tree? This mandara tree has been grown by my wife, Yakshini. And now that mandara plant or that mandara tree has started bearing flowers. So that is an indication that you have reached my house. And just next to that, uh, you know, um, house is a pond. So there is a pond attached to the house wherein golden lotuses are present and swans are always residing in this mountain, sorry, in this pond. And after having seen all this further, another indication is on the doors of this, um, house, there is Shanka as well as Chakra. And these details will help you identify the house that uh, in, in which my wife Yakshini is living. So once you reach this house, what will you see? You'll see a beautiful woman who's as though the greatest creation of Brahma, 
but at this point of time who is grieving and who is eyes are red by constantly weeping and her hair is also uncombed further she will be holding a veena as though she is trying to play so she has composed several songs but because of the current situation what is happening is though she is holding the veena and she is trying to play it says it seems as though she is absent minded and she is unable to play the veena but she is the person who has composed several songs but here she is unable to even play the veena further she has placed a lot of flowers on the ground why she placed flowers she has used it to count the number of days that has already gone by so one year is the time that kubera has banished the yaksha so she is keeping a track of how many days have passed by placing flowers on the ground so it's saying that when you go, when you go into that house you will see that my wife has placed a lot of flowers on the ground thinking how many days have passed and how many more days are yet to be um, have, are you know are yet to pass so uh, once this is all this will show you that uh, you have reached the right place and you are seeing my wife yakshini further in the morning so i know she is very deep in thought about me but in the mornings she has a lot of work to do so she will be a little diverted so she won't think too much but in the night when she comes back to her house she is unable to sleep because of constantly thinking about me and she constantly be shedding tears so please at this point of time i ask you to go and meet her in the night and give comfort by delivering my message and further he tell that i'm sure that once you see my wife in this pathetic situation crying so much i'm sure that even you will shed tears why rajah sarvo bhavati karuna vrittir ardranta ratma because kind hearted men men will always be moved by sympathy so if they see if a kind hearted person sees someone else in a bad state even he will feel very bad so i know that since you are a kind hearted person seeing my wife yakshini crying you will also shed tears further please um go to her and tell her my message and when you start speaking to her what will happen so he, now he starts telling the message what is the message that she should convey first he'll tell that please introduce yourself telling that oh lady i am the cloud who is a very good friend of your husband and i bring news from your husband once you tell the sentence that yakshini she you know eagerly look at you know she is uh, she is now weeping but once you tell this uh, a friend of yaksha and you know you are bringing message from me she will surely become eager and she will start looking into the sky towards you similar to how maithili that is sita was eagerly waiting for the message of vayu putra hanuman similar she will eagerly wait for you to give the message sent by me what should you tell you should tell oh lady your husband who is currently residing in ramagiri ashrama is safe and he is inquiring about your well being he is grieved that he is you know because of your separation he is grieving and he is constantly thinking and he is weeping and he has become very weak and he is sure that even you have become very weak and that is why he has sent me and you know he who has you know who used to you know speak with you who used to live with you and who used to, who used to be very happy in your company has now started speaking two things like clouds and as a result i have come here bearing his message so further he has told me that this is the words of the yaksha that the cloud is mentioning i have grieved too much this eight months have been very difficult for me but still i have brought courage in myself and i am somehow surviving so please o oh yakshini you also find courage and please remember that bad fortune and good fortune keep moving like the spokes of wheels neecher gachhat uparicha dasha chakra neemi kramena again it's a alteration of chakrara pankti re vagachhati bhagya pankti so he's saying that the yaksha is telling through you know he's sending the message that don't worry eight months have already passed so just wait for four more months with you know some courage and by, after that this all problems will be over and good fortune and bad fortune keep revolving like the spokes of the wheel so further he tells that my curse will end when shiva will when vishnu will get up from the adishesha and at that point of time when the four months end we will surely reunite and further after this is a message that is of course kalidasas if you read meghadutam the description is still more vivid and it's in detail but i have taken the crux of that message and i have presented here after having conveyed this message what is the, what did the uh, yaksha ask yaksha tells that oh cloud so after this point you would have conveyed my message but please don't go away from there because you have given the message to your brother's wife but please come back come back to me give her the news of her well being because i am clinging on to my life thinking that she is good so once you give me this message then i will be happy so just after giving the message please don't go away please come back to me please tell me how she is please give her the message of her well you know well being and then you can carry forward after having told this kachit somya vyavasitam idam bandukrityam tvayame pratyadeshan nakalu bhavato dhiratam kalpayami nishabdo pi pradasi jala 
प्रदशसी जलम यांचित चातके प्रत्युक्त ही प्रणयिषु सता After having told told all this, he has told how to go, how to identify the place, how to identify the house, how to identify his, you know, his wife, how to give the message. Also, he has told. After telling all this, of course, till this point of time, the cloud is silent. You know, the cloud is inanimate; it cannot speak. But Kalidasa's words create a very beautiful impact. Here, the yakshat is that, O oh cloud, you have been silent for all this time. But I want to ask you, have you agreed to do my job? Have you agreed to take this message? But I don't want to ask you again. I don't want to ask you again or question your decision because you are the person who, without if chataka, are the birds that you know ask for rainwater because it is called chataka birds drink only the water given by rains. So when the chataka bird asks for water, you without even making a sound, without even speaking a word, you will give water. So you are such a great personality that even without telling, even without speaking, you do your work. Hence. i am firmly i firmly believe that in the case of good people completion or fulfillment of the request itself is the answer so good people they don't boast they don't tell ah, i can do second do that like how in kamada in you know kumar sambhava the you know uh, manmata told yeah i can do the second do that but finally he didn't do anything you are not like that you don't speak you do your action you do the work and show hence i know that you are a great person and i know you won't speak anything but you'll surely fulfill this work as a fitting reply so I, hence since i know about you i don't want to further question you that i don't want to ask you have you understood my message have you understood the path i don't want to ask you anything i know you have completely understood what i have told after having told all this etat krutva priya manuchita priya manuchita prarthana vartmino me sauhar dadva vidhura iti va mayya nukrosha buddhya ishtan deshan jalada vichara pravrsha samsrita shrihi मा भूदेव क्षणम विद्युता विप्रयोग सो दिस इज यूशली कन्सिडर्ड द लास्ट श्लोक बट विल कम टू दट सो हियर द यक्ष ब्यूटिफुल इट इज दट एक हेविंग हेन्स डन मई जॉब दट इज हेविंग हेन्स कंप्लीटेड द टास्क ऑफ गिविंग हर द मेसेज कमिंग बैक एंड गिविंग हर हर रिप्लाइ प्रिय अनुचित प्रार्थना सो ऐ नो सी यू आर अ वेरी ग्रेट पर्सन एंड ऐम अ वर्थलेस पर्सन बट स्टिल ऐम आस्किंग यू दिस वै नो रिक्वेस्ट सो there is no matching between your level and my level you are a uttama and i am an adhama so there is no comparison i should be worthless and i should not be asking you but still i have given my request and sauhardadva vidhuraitiva and you have completed this you will complete this task why either it is because you consider me as a friend or because you have compassion you have pity oh this yaksha is in a very bad state okay let me help him so just out of pity or because of friendship you may complete this task so please i know i am worthless to ask for this request but i know that either because of friendship or because of compassion you will finish this task so thank you for that and ishtan deshan jalada jalada vichara so o cloud after having completed this task ishtan deshan vichara please go to all the desired places that you want and what do i pray for you so thank you for doing the work so here kalidasa is telling that even before doing the work you have to thank him that is how you you know uh, make people do your job so that is how he is giving a very beautiful lesson that if you praise someone and if you tell ha ah, thank you i know you can do this job this is a very small job for you but uh, yeah thank you for that if you tell that the person who is doing the job will be more enthusiastic so here he is doing the same thing so after having completed this please go to all the desired places and there is no no one to stop you further i pray that na bhu devam kshanam api viprayoga i pray that there is not even one second of separation between you and your wife lightning so beautifully kalidasa nearly comes to the conclusion of meghadutam by telling that oh cloud you have done so much for me even though i am worthless you have done so much for me but still i pray that you should never be separated similar to how i have been separated by my wife i hope that you are never separated by lightning even for one second so that is what i pray for you having told all this usually some some you know uh, texts conclude meghadutam at this point whereas some conclude you know, add two or three extra shlokas after this so what actually the these extra shlokas tell is the megha actually followed the path told by yaksha he goes he rests on the you know wherever yaksha told he rests on those mountains wherever yaksha told he drinks from those uh, rivers and finally he reaches alakapuri then based on the details given by the yaksha the megha the cloud identifies the house in alakapuri of the yakshini he goes and meets the wife of the yaksha and tam sandesham jaladharavaro divya vacha cha chakshe pranaas tasya jana hitarato rakshitum yaksha vadvaha 
प्राप्योदंतम प्रमुदित मना सातस्थ स्वभर्त केशां न सियादिमत फला प्राथना प्राथनो हितमेशु सो दट जलधर दट इज दट क्लौड दिव्या दिव्यावाच सो हि सेइंग दट हि इट डिलीवर्ड द डिवाइन मेसेज सो यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड दट अ क्लौड इज इनएनिमेट इट डज नॉट हैव द एबिलिटी टू लिसन इट डज नॉट हैव द एबिलिटी टू थिंक और स्पीक बट सिंस कालिदास हैज सो ब्यूटीफुली created brought life into the cloud that here it is told that divya vacha it told the divine message sent by the yaksha to the yakshin why did it tell yaksha vadvaha pranan rakshitum in order to protect so uh, as you know told by the yaksha if a message of my well being is not sent to yakshini soon she will lose her life so in order to protect the brother's wife's life that is the yakshini's life that cloud came and delivered the divine message to the yakshini and what did the yakshini do having listened to the well being of his husband her, her husband she actually becomes comforted and she decides to somehow with courage stay or you know um, continue to live for those remaining four months in separation so till this point of time she is very dejected but now after having her to the well being of her husband now she is comforted and she decides that she should continue to live for those remaining four months and further kalidasa beautifully tells that केशां न सियादिमत फला प्रार्थनो हितमेशु व्हिच इज दैट रिक्वेस्ट दैट डज नॉट दैट यू आस्क सो इफ यू आस्क सम गुड पर्सन फॉर सम रिक्वेस्ट व्हिच आर दोस रिक्वेस्ट दैट डज नॉट बेयर फ्रूट सो व्हेन यू रिक्वेस्ट अ गुड पर्सन दैट श्योरली विल बिकम फ्रूटफुल ही इज टेलिंग दैट एनी रिक्वेस्ट डन टू ग्रेट पीपल विल ऑलवेज बेयर फ्रूट और इट विल बिकम फ्रूटफुल फॉर श्योर श्रुत्वा वार्तां जरद कथितां तां धनेशोपि सद्यः शापस्यांतम सदय हृदय संविधायास्तकोपः संयोजयित विगलित शुचो दंपती पृष्ठचित्त भोगानिष्ठा नवीरत सुखम भोजयामास शश्वत सो इवन आफ्टर वन्स दिस इन्सिडेंट इज डन इवन कुबेरा कम्स टू नो ऑफ द हैपनिंग्स ऑफ हाउ द न्यूज इज ब्रॉट बाय द क्लाउड एंड ही आल्सो लिसंस टू द you know the message sent by yaksha and even he is moved his heart his heart also is filled with compassion and pity so asta kopam having let go of his anger he ends the punishment of or the curse of the yaksha and finally he reunites the yaksha with the yakshini and after having done this bhojaya masa shashvat so they lived happily ever after so that common phrase in english stories that you see they lived happily ever after that was used by kalidasa decades and centuries ago by this last shlokas last you know sentence bhojaya masa shashvat they lived happily ever after so in this way kalidasa has beautifully given us the work called meghadutam and in this particular uh, great kavya we come across yancha mogha varam adhigone nadhame labdha kamah that is a request Full, not fulfilled by a great person is better than a request fulfilled by a low person. Uttamarinda ma utta uttamarinda tiraskarsal patta bedi kayu. Adhamarinda pura sal patta bedi ke gin talu uttama. So in this way, we have come to a conclusion of Sukh Tirathani. So the lesson that we started somewhere in March, March eighth probably, and uh, we have carried on for probably three months uh, doing it. So we have finally concluded Sukh Tirathani. a very small lesson but still something that needed a lot of explanation to bring you into uh, the folds of sanskrit literature so i think that i have done a good job of taking this up as this year's uh, main intention so with that we have concluded sukti ratnani so just a quick i'll just take 2 minutes so we'll go through the complete sukti ratnani all the time i'll give you the meaning that you can note it down if needed snigdha jana samvibhaktam hi dukham sahya vedanam bhavati the sorrow that is shared among the close ones or the near ones becomes bearable tanna saho tanna varondige hanchikollal pattantaha dukkhavu sahisikollalu sadhyavagutade chakrara pankti re vagachati bhagya pankti the the wheel of fortune moves like the spokes of the wheel chakra sukha dukkha bhagyavu chakrada chakradanti tirguttirutade निरीहाणामीशस्तृणमेव तिरस्कार विषय फॉर अ पर्सन हू डज नॉट डिजैर एनीथिंग इवन गाड इज आज निग्लीजबल आज अ ब्लेड ऑफ ग्रास निरीहनिगे भगवंतनू कूड़ा तृण के समान उद्योगिन पुरुष सिंह मुपैति लक्ष्मी फॉर्च्यून फेवर्स द ब्रेव उद्योगी लक्ष्मी कूड़ा वलिबरता क्लेश फल पुनर्नवता विधत्ते 
on the you know fulfillment or on bearing the good results of any work the um fatigue of doing that work vanishes maadida kelasakke uttama phala dorakidaga aa kelasada shramavu horutu hogutade prakshalanaadhi pankasya dura dasparshanam varam rather than getting sprinkled by sludge it is better to stay away from it ಕೆಸರಿನ ಮೇಲೆ ಕಲ್ಲೆರಚಿ ಮೈ ಮೇಲೆ ಹರಿಸಿಕೊಳ್ಳುವುದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ದೂರ ನಿಲ್ಲುವುದೇ ಮೇಲು ಪ್ರತಿಬದ್ಧನಾದಿ ಶ್ರೇಯ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪೂಜಾ ವ್ಯತಿಕ್ರಮ ನಾಟ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಬಲ್ ವಿತ್ ಹೋಲ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಯರ್ ಫೇಮ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪೂಜಿಸಲ್ ಪಟ್ ಪಡಬೇಕಾದವರನ್ನು ಪೂಜಿಸಲ್ ಪೂಜೆ ಮಾಡದಿದ್ದರೆ ಅದು ಶ್ರಮವನ್ನು ತಡೆ ಹಿಡಿಯುತ್ತದೆ ಯಾದೃಶಂ ಭಕ್ಷಯೇದನ್ನ ಬುದ್ಧಿರ್ಭವತಿ ತಾದೃಶಿ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿಯ ಆಹಾರವನ್ನು ವಾಟ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಫುಡ್ ವಿ ಟೇಕ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟೆಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿಯ ಆಹಾರವನ್ನು ಸೇವಿಸುತ್ತೆಯೋ ಸೇವಿಸುತ್ತೇವೋ ಬುದ್ಧಿಯು ಆ ರೀತಿಯಾಗಿ ಆಗುತ್ತದೆ ಸಂಭಾವಿತ ಚಾಕೀರ್ತಿ ಮರಣಾದ ಅತಿರಿಚ್ಯತೆ ದ ಇನ್ಫೇಮ್ ದಟ್ ಹಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ದಟ್ ಹಸ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ಫೇಮ್ ಕಾಸಸ್ ಈವನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಹಾರ್ಮ್ ಟು ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ರಾದರ್ ದನ್ ಡೆತ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಅಕೀರ್ತಿಯು ಉತ್ತಮರಿಗೆ ಮರಣಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಹೆಚ್ಚಿನ ಬಾಧೆಯನ್ನು ಕೊಡುತ್ತದೆ ಯಾಂಛಾ ಮೋಘ ವರ ಮಧಿಗುಣೆ ನಾಧ ಮೇ ಲಬ್ಧ ಕಾಮ ದ ಡಿಸೈಯರ್ fulfilled by a great not fulfilled by a great person is better than a desire fulfilled by a lower person uttamarinda tiraskarasalpatta bedikeyu adhamarinda pooresalpatta bedike gintalu uttama so in this way we have concluded sukti ratnani and from the next class we will go back to revision of you know wherever we have left behind so with that we have concluded this so if you have any doubts we can discuss or we can conclude today's meeting ಗುರುರೇವ ಗತಿ ಗುರು ಮೇವ ಭಜೆ ಗುರುಣೈವ ಸಹ ಅಸ್ಮಿ ನಮೋ ಗುರವೇ ನ ಗುರೋ ಪರಮಂ ಶಿಶುರಸ್ಮಿ ಗುರೋರ್ಮತಿರಸ್ತಿ ಗುರೌ ಮಮ ಪಾಹಿ ಗುರೋ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ